Hey YouTube, today I'm going to be showing you how to test your clock in your 1999 third gen Forerunner. This process is also similar for other Toyota clocks. For example, this one here is actually pulled out of a 96 Toyota RAV4, but it has the exact same voltage and the exact same four pins that the clock will have from the Toyota Forerunner. So looking back here, top left corner we have the part number, now this is where it's manufactured, some other number, then it's made of the ABS plastic or the certification, and as you can see it has four wires. Um, the colors don't really matter, especially if you're colorblind like me, but if you notice here on the plastic itself, there's actually imprint of what each wire is. So we have B with a plus sign, we have E which has the minus sign which means a negative or a ground. We are working with DC power here, obviously. And then here we have ILL, which stands for illumination with the plus sign. Here we have ACC with the plus sign. So B plus is for the battery. That's your constant 12 volts to this clock so that it doesn't forget the time and the hour. Um, the negative is just a negative or a ground. It goes back into your wiring harness and attaches anywhere to the frame. We need somewhere for the current to flow, so we have to have a negative and a DC circuit. Here we have ILL. That stands for illumination. Basically, this signal um, could be, for one, it could be wired to a potentiometer. So, for example, there's a potentiometer on your dashboard, and that adjusts the voltage level, or the brightness of your gauge cluster, your clock, um, the lights in your climate control, as well as the lights on your shift bezel. So that's what that does. And here we have ACC, and I think what this signal does, it's also a 12 volt signal, but this just makes it so the clock isn't on if your car is not in the ACC or the on position, so that way the clock's not on all night, draining your car battery. So with that being said, uh, you could test this using four different methods. You could use a DC programmable power supply, you could use a Milwaukee M12 battery, you could use a 12 volt car battery, or you could use eight AA batteries stacked in series to make a 12 volt power source. Uh, that's probably not ideal, but it is possible. So here I'm just going to use my programmable power supply, so I've set it to 12 volts. The current doesn't matter because it's only going to draw the amount of current that it needs unless it has some sort of short circuit, and potentially this could get hot, but just set your current pretty low so that you can't pump more than maybe half an amp through this max. So to wire it up, uh, let's start with the negative. So to wire it up, let's start with the E negative. So that's the second wire on the harness. Um, looking at the harness, as you can see, I've just taken some wire strippers and stripped off about half an inch. So this is the negative. So black goes to negative. And then these three are positives. Since we have a 12 volt source, we can actually just twist all three of these together since they're all gonna go to this positive 12 volts. So just like that, I have those three leads twisted together. Let's clip on the positive 12 volt source. And right now the clock is off. Let me turn on the power supply. Give it a second and your clock comes to life. Looks like I'm holding it upside down. And then here we can just kind of test it. So it's lit, it's bright. Here you can change the minutes. All right, and after a quick experiment of wiring a potentiometer to the ILL pin, basically I don't think it has a variable voltage of zero to 12 volts where 12 volts would be the brightest. Zero would probably be off, but maybe six volts is the dim mode. But one thing I did notice when playing with the potentiometer is it seems that the clock has two brightnesses. There's the regular daytime brightness, and then there's the lower brightness once you hit a threshold of about um, nine volts. So one thing I did notice is there is two different thresholds. There's the daytime light, which is uh, full 12 volts, and then I imagine this is wired in with your headlight switch, so when your headlights are on, uh, this likely dims just so it's not shining bright into the cabin. And so that's what the ILL pin does from my experience with this exact clock. It may be different for other ones, but like I said, it's not a variable voltage from like 6 to 12 that can be directly controlled with the potentiometer, at least when I tried it with this one. So here we're in the Forerunner. As you can see, I have the key in the ACC position. That's why the clock is on. If I go ahead and turn on the headlight switch, you'll notice that the clock dims. It's kind of hard to tell, but just like that and you'll notice all these other lights come on the gauge cluster and sometimes the ones for the automatic transmission will light up on the center console all right and on our multimeter as you can see we have a 12 volt reading and basically i have the black and the negative or the grounding pin 
and I have the red and the B positive pin, so that's the constant 12 volts to the clock that keeps the memory alive. Alright, so now I have the negative in the ground, and I have the red in the very bottom pin, which is our ACC. So as you can see, the vehicle is off, and we get a reading of 0 volts. Now if I go ahead and turn it on to ACC, or even uh, to the next position, the start or crank it, as you can see, we get 12 volts. So that line basically turns off the clock so it doesn't drain your battery all night. Then lastly for the ILL or the illumination pin, as you can see we get a reading of 0 volts. But then if I go ahead and turn on my headlights... Let me know if you have any questions, go ahead and leave it in the comments. And if you learned something or want more tutorial videos about your 99 Forerunner or 3rd Gen Forerunner, go ahead and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.